Now you can. You're listening to the Go Lightly Marshall Hour on freedomtalkradio.net. freedomtalkradio.net Okay, good afternoon. It is uh, just after midday on Resurrection Day and it is April the 5th, 2015 in Tugum, Queensland, Australia, the home of the Christ, announced by Pope Benedict XVI on March the 12th and then again on March the 26th. 2013, and Pope Benedict, of course, has paid the price for it. Not only did he lose the three witnesses to the second coming that unfolded within his office once he retired, he lost his freedom to communicate with the Christ. However, it's all prophecy playing out, and as the world is uh, praying for Jesus to come, hello, looks like we've got somebody, (laughs) the resurrection rocks, Andrew. The resurrection certainly does rock. <laughs> he is the resurrection and the life. And that's why all that are on the earth now that have um, been born after the Christ was reborn to the earth, January 11th, 1944, at 2.22am, the day and the hour. That is he, the father this time, not the young dude, Jesus. It was never the young dude coming back, was it, Andrew? <laughs> Andrew understands. He's just left a comment. Resurrection rocks. And if anybody else is out there, or what, you can send a little message too. Um, yeah, I said that we're going to wing this program. We have nothing prepared, but we never do. <laughs> well, that's right. We never do. No. However, um, this time we really don't. It's got so desperate that I've gone and played dress-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Want to go and stand over there and take uh, a photograph of me? All right. Well, uh, let me explain first. Petra, darling, love the outfit. And Yah was going on about my golden hair yesterday. So I thought I'd put some gold earrings on and, and wear this beautiful outfit that pre, uh, Petra presented me with. I, I want to, if it means anything at all out there, it's uh, Petra's sister who is the designer of uh, these pants and... Uh, top that I'm wearing that is just glorious and it came in this beautiful case that is uh, superb and her name is Suzanne Weeb W-I-E-B-E Suzanne is the designer and the sister of Petra and Petra of course is a stylist and productionist for uh, all kinds of magazines she organises very talented people lovely talented people so I was delighted because let's face it um what you see me in every day on the air is what we kick about him. Yah sitting over there in his two-tone singlet at the moment <laughs> and his shorts. <laughs> and so this is a, a little bit of uh, luxury that I was delighted to receive. I've noticed there's a lot of profuse hair growing on me lately. Yeah. I, I could be evolving or devolving. Back <laughs> to being a gorilla. Or it's the hyaluronic acid. <laughs> Oh, something, uh, my, my daughter is um, an esthetician over in uh, Calgary, and anyway, bottom line is, she told me, those, those fillers, you know, that you go to have an injection, in, in Calgary they charge $800, Canadian dollars, for one mil of what is hyaluronic acid, 
Well, guess what? I bought a kilo of the hyaluronic acid for $33 on eBay. <laughs> and when you mix it with, uh, uh, it, it depends on the ratio, it's either 1% or 2% with, with uh, 50 mil. Enough to make a swimming pool. Enough to make a swimming pool. Uh, <laughs> and it does the same thing. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant for all of those who don't know what a humectant is, we're talking about this on Resurrection Day, but if you cut open a piece of fruit, an apple for example, leave it out on the uh, table and you'll see drops of water form. That is the humectant from within the apple that is attracting the moisture from the air. It's hyaluronic acid. So instead of $800 for a one mil syringe, can you believe it? I make, a pen. <laughs> I make our own hyaluronic acid, and, and but it's good for hair growth. <laughs> All over the body, you are finding out. <laughs> so it's a humectant. So I've been rubbing it on my head, right? <laughs> been rubbing it on your head and on, head. Every, on your face everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I make our own vitamin C serum too. That's another 33 bucks for a kilogram on... on uh, I mean, they charge... All it is, is is water with, you know, a gram of vitamin C, micronized vitamin C powder, pharmaceutical grade or whatever. Oh, again, you know, I've got enough to make a swimming pool for, and it's cost about 33 bucks, and they charge $149 for this thing. This is what somebody, oh, I can't believe it, such a rip-off. But anyway, I enjoy busting. <laughs> Bust, busting and giving people the information. Speaking of which, I've still got to get to... Joel, the upload of that um, eye exercise, 33 pages that I paid for it, it really is very helpful. And again, you can reverse the need for glasses, although it's become quite a fashionable thing around here. I was thinking, I'll break this arm off and, and stick it on so I can just hold it there. Put it on like over a, a seat, uh, Whatever, until well, the uh, yeah. others glute, arrive. Glutac, right in the center. Glutac, there you go, there you go. But you have to take that off because it gets in the way. And uh, we've got... Um, well, rather than break it off under the screw. Under the screw, yes. Whatever. So, yeah, so you want... Now, do you want to go over there so we can have a... Yes, all right. Now, this is... So, this is a demo for um, Suzanne Weeb, the, the very talented sister of Petra, who is talented. Petra from Petra... Patmos. <laughs> With us for five days. And I'm wearing six-inch heels that I, I don't wear. So, uh, if I topple over, it's because uh, I don't wear... So here we go. Hello. I haven't got it there yet. All right. <laughs> I'll try to do the um, the model thing that. Uh... <laughs> um, Petra is so famous for with her beautiful Harper's. How about this Harper's Harper Bazaar or what are they called? Harper's Bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, these pants feel incredible. They are 100% um, silk and they are fully lined on the inside. The stitching is amazing. First class. Petra was wearing a pair. I figured I've got maybe 12 months to go on the hyper vibe and not eating anything for that time before. <laughs> they fit the way they do, Petra, because she's such a slim bean. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and this this is wonderful. This this uh, you can do all kinds of things with it. I've just wrapped it up at the moment, and it looks uh, looks like a candy wrapper, doesn't it? Chocolate uh, mm. Cadbury's chocolate box, and look at this. Look at this. You don't have to wear any gloves. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Petra, darling. We have to go somewhere now that we can wear. It. <laughs> um, uh, Joel just said down to the cafe. Absolutely. <laughs> Go down to the cookbook. Absolutely. The, the, the salty squid. Yeah, the salty squid. Well, we'll give another plug for the salty squid because somebody from TripAdvisor gave them a rotten wrap and how well, dare they? One of the greatest, uh, <laughs> the fellow there's in New Zealand, huh? Yes. Uh, and he's a wonderful cook. Oh, he's marvellous. The, the chef. The food he makes there is just uh, unbelievable. A baker. He's a baker he's and a, He's a proper a chef. chef. Huh? Totally. Everything's fresh, organic, and uh, they take such care to serve great coffee all the time, and the food is marvellous. <laughs> so we got, we got in there with our review after we heard about the rotten review on the trip advisor. I said, it must so, well, some very nasty people out there. Yes, so. yes, yes, yes. Anyway. That can ruin the business. Yes. On trip advisor. Well, she said that. Uh, they they had been busy and then they got this one nasty review and she said the people there were happy they were all laughing and there was nothing 
They didn't complain to them about anything. And when they went away, they wrote this rotten review and she said it had been quiet since. So people take well, this thing that's seriously. Well, really uh, reflecting that. Well, uh, the point is, um, and I heard Ian talking about this with Barrier, that they are a destination. Like people set out to go there and then turn around and go back home. Right. It's not like it's a drive-by at going through any city or town because it's on a highway. It isn't. You have to know about it. And people do read all of these things like TripAdvisors and Booking.com. And every time we go somewhere, I must write a review, which I do. And uh, mm. that, 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 So it looks like it might have been a jealous uh, cook oh, whatever. Or but anyway, restaurant. Or they like seem that. to be fairly busy. There but uh, like you, you couldn't get better people nor better food, really. Yes. Uh, well, you can trust that it is uh, sourced the best. Yeah. All right, so, so cover from that. vegetarian to meat eaters or whatever, and the beautiful cakes he makes, and uh, the pastries. lovely people they are. Pastries, yeah. And it's right on the water, across the road from the sea. Across the road from uh, the ocean. Yeah. We'll have to go down there later for a, a resurrection <laughs> yeah, marker. You take the camera yeah, and right. show everybody what oh, we, we mean. <laughs> I haven't been there for a few days. I'm getting all... <laughs> Petra, Petra knows. She's, she, uh, as much as I love her mocha, she loves her espresso. A double shot espresso. <laughs> right. so we're a good pair in that. Tub. Now, I really have to do go and get changed into my more comfortable shorts. This is such an elegant outfit. I feel like I'm going to spoil it. It's a bit like sitting down to dinner at night time, isn't it? And wearing white, foolish <laughs> yeah, well, in your case, yeah. yeah. Well, how You aren't nearly as bad as me as pulling food on yourself. Well, you no, know, chip off the old block. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you keep talking, I'll be back. And uh, Andrew, say something else, hun. Or maybe you have already. I can't. Anyway, I'll be back. <laughs> All right, uh, what I've just been uh, looking at is a very, very good uh, Shraddha to Rin. These people. Uh, um, very advanced thinkers, uh, scientists, uh, and there's a lot of uh, controversy over this stupidity of the uh, uh, attempt in uh, 1988 to uh, uh, debunk with the carbon-14 dating of the Shroud, which come back at 1360 or somewhere around that era. Now, it was done by three separate uh, uh, laboratories. However, we find that uh, there was a protocol that three separate pieces of cloth were to be taken and they only took one and they cut it up into three pieces and then they got together with their heads together before um, they took it to their own laboratories to do the tests, which was all against the protocols of keeping them uh, separate. And what happened was uh, the one uh, of the uh, men involved got a million pounds uh, after the test was done for his laboratory, providing he come up with a negative report, which they all did. Found that the piece that they tested was uh, cut from uh, one of the patches after the fire on um, December the 4th, 1532. So the uh, nuns stitched a piece of cloth on and they had a wonderful way of uh, joining pieces of uh, material and they would unwind the uh, uh, cloth itself, pull the strand out and then weave a piece of cotton into it. Well, Linen and cotton is uh, something that you don't mix in uh, the religious world of uh, the Essenes and um, you only wore linen. Today, cotton uh, has been exposed as being part of the uh, material that was uh, sewn on in the, after the fire in the uh, 1532 era. So when they put the two pieces together, they cut that piece out and this was known to the people that took the samples as being a little bit of the shroud and a great deal of the patch. So they end up with 
the shroud material itself taking the time back and the 1532 era uh, piece of cotton stitched in took it forward in time. So when you put the two together, they end up with 1360. So uh, that is the uh, extraordinary length that the Jews have gone to to uh, try and make the, the uh, shroud a fake. So I'll just uh, get rid of this and show you what it is. Um, Jesus and the Shroud of Turin, best film on shroud ever produced, The Resur Resurrection of Jesus Christ. So they use people uh, in Jerusalem that are Jews, that are experts on uh, pollen, on flowers and different types of uh, material. And uh, one Jewish scholar there said that uh, the uh, particular pollen that he found around the head uh, near the shroud uh, where the crown of thorns is displayed, uh, he went out into the area which at least only grows one place in the world and it is a very, very thorny looking bush. So they show you the crown of thorns on the shroud and then they show you the thorns on this pollen that is only around the head of the uh, shroud of Turin, which is quite an extraordinary thing. Now, on another subject, you're back. I'm back. Now, Andrew has asked um, anything on Nehemiah Station, and I said we hadn't been there for ages, going there now, so I've just pulled it up. Uh, see if there's anything showing on there. Webcam. Well, so far as these planets are concerned, they're all over the place around the world on webcams. Uh, Germany in particular is showing up. And that's what we noticed when we were driving through Germany, mm. that the, uh, the the light was coming up at about three in the morning. Yes. Which was uh, very, very strange. And there were, we were points where we were driving along um, throughout Europe where a truck would go past and it wouldn't be casting a shadow. No shadows at all. It and we got, we got movies of that and still shots and so on. And also when we went to uh, Glastonbury up to St. Michael's Tor. Um, Glastonbury Tor, St. Michael's Tower. That place. That one. Same as the other one. So two of them, is it? <laughs> oh dear. Um, there was no shadows. What we did find, however, and this will lead us into the next subject, is that um, all the churches uh, in the original um, idea of the church was to build it facing east and the altar arranged to face east. Yes. So that the light would come through the doorway and shine onto the altar and the altar itself was covered with a, uh, a cloth that was uh, the Shroud of Turin type of cloth that was indicating it was the Shroud of Turin. Mm. So uh, this is also, if you have just tuned in recently, the Shroud of Turin was originally the um, Last Supper, the cloth on the table, and that is why it was covered with flowers, because they were all Essenes, and they used flowers to making the essential oils for curing people, because the Essenes were healers. So uh, the flowers would be set on the table, and the uh, pollen come off the, off the flowers and uh, there are 28 flowers that they have identified on the Shroud of Turin as by their shape. In other words, the resting on the cloth, the, the uh, petals and the stems and the leaves left their imprint on the Shroud which they've been able to detect. And then they've located something in the neighbourhood of uh, 60 um, pollen, um, 28 of which is only native to the area around Jerusalem. So it puts it in Jerusalem as a point. So um, the shroud itself, therefore, was the cloth on the Last Supper, and the cloth on the Last Supper was in the photograph that we've shown you of the house that we went to uh, in India. Uh, the people there were atheists, but they had on the wall a clever move by them to get Christians to pick their house to go stay in as opposed to somewhere else by having the painting of the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. So uh, 
this is what uh, we were able to do. And of course, as usual, I used my GPS and uh, this little recording machine here, which I've just got another one. Uh, th there it is there. That's a uh, Meridian GPS Magellan. I think it's the best one that come out with because it gives you the hands-on. You can do things with it that you can't do with other uh, GPS equipment. And um, with that, you can put in uh, a latitude and longitude anywhere in the world by simply either adding it or typing it in or being in a location, let it pick up the satellites and then it will uh, allow you just to store a waypoint and you can aim it whatever you like. And this is what I did in there. And then I was able with that, sitting in this uh, uh, small house or apartment rather, and then uh, give it a go to, which is uh, on the screen there, I'll show you. Little button there is a go to button. All right, you press that and it'll ask you where you want to go to. So you then scroll through your database to see what your waypoints are. And of course, I had one in from the uh, location of my birth home uh, in Australia. And it was 5624 miles, which is um, the amount of uh, words there are in the uh, King James uh, Strong's Concordance of the New Testament, 5624 words. Mm. Now, uh, when we was leaving, again, we had... Um, uh, hired a car because we had to go up to St Michael's, and um, but we didn't know that when we, we were. We didn't know no, we that, are, we, that was. We went to and Agra. We wanted to, we wanted to um, uh, drop the car off at the airport, and we we come across this little guy that I've never seen anyone so stupid. He was. Um, well, he was the guy who came to pick us up. First the of all, they had the up. wrong location for the pickup of the car. And when we got there and trying to find that, they sent this dude as the driver to pick us up to take us back to where it was supposed to be the pickup for the car. And of course, of where the car was supposed to be picked up, the guys that there was a windshield place that, that uh, replaced the glass on your car. They had no idea what he took. We were talking about. Mm. And so this clown finally um, comes and we like locate it, and he comes and picks us up and takes us back to this hotel. And the hotel was where the car was supposed to be picked up and then dropped off. So we thought, well, we're not going to drop it off the airport because it's too complicated. Uh, we decided that we would uh, get a, um, a room in the same hotel where we're dropping the car off. So the next day we can go by taxi straight over with Petra to the airport, which we did. And we measured from there back to, again, uh, where I was uh, birth home and it's the same number 5624 uh, nautical miles uh, as it was from the first house we stayed in India same number and as we were walking out I took a photograph of the building and the next right next door to was a hospital which treats diabetes and dengue fever and all these multitudes of diseases spread by mosquitoes which of course is uh, why they keep the population down and keep the, the pharmaceutical industry making lots of money. And that way it gives them a tool to, to uh, uh, blackmail under the threat of re re removing the pharmaceuticals uh, from supporting all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that are requiring every day from dengue fever to malaria to diabetes to or whatever. So this is how the Jews uh, control India, because uh, Gandhi, when he was um, uh, the first man to become, I think, Prime Minister of uh, uh, India, uh, he had successfully kicked the English out, which is Jews. And uh, he made laws saying that uh, they, they couldn't get in there again with corporations like they had everywhere else in the world. But what he was un unable to uh, comprehend at the time was the power of the pharmaceutical industry. When people are sick, they've got to have the pharmaceuticals. Mm. So they've got to keep you sick. So therefore, as we know what they do in Canada, they'll breed 100 million uh, mosquitoes a day, mm. and then they'll dump them over various towns in uh, North America, in particular Canada, 
Yes, they and then are. the doctors yes, are advised to uh, to uh, uh, keep quiet about it. But whatever they find, as people coming down with, was is to report in, so that various towns across Canada, in particular on the border, uh, would report in various conditions that people would have after mm. they've dropped a couple of million uh, mosquitoes that yeah. have been um, bred bred with the disease with the disease in it to see result. what and how the disease spreads. So therefore the lab is in Ontario. The labs in Ontario. Therefore they can go out and they can uh, uh, take them to anywhere in the world, places like Zambia or Congo or India, and uh, this is how to keep the people sick with the flying hypodermic. Hmm. So uh, I wanted to add a little bit more on uh, a slightly different subject. Uh, you know I've written books on the straw man, go to lulu.com if you want to download it, or you can buy the books. But there's also uh, a lot of other books there I've written and you can download for free or buy them, and uh, various subjects. But um, anything from Coriolis to the Great Pyramid to uh, the Beast and 666 and Lulu.com um, was supposed to have had these books available in 900,000 bookstores around the world and uh, I got none in any of the bookstores and of course you can't go back to them and say look I paid the money for this why aren't they out there you never get a reply because guess what they're owned by a Jewish corporation again so it's a self-published but they control everything this is the whole hmm. point so uh, anything that's got any control over the world they do it in a covert way, subterfuge as well. Now, the straw man, as you know, is your birth certificate being sold. Uh, presently, a baby's birth certificate in America is worth seven million US dollars. Converted into a corporation called a straw man, capital letters. That's why capital letters on his tombstone or on your driver's license or credit cards or anything official that comes from the governments is the capital letters. Because you are declared dead. And your birth certificate is sold and traded. So. By the time you have a little war like Vietnam or World War II or something like that, all the people who have birth certificates who die, the people who own, whether it be governments themselves, uh, Australia was one that owned a lot of the um, World War II uh, veterans who got killed, um, they uh, put a million pounds, a lot of money, when people were born, about my age or older, uh, that went to war in either Vietnam or Korea or Malaya or um, uh, any of the conflicts, but in World War II in particular. So people would go to war, they'd die, and whoever owns the birth certificate, uh, which had been traded on the stock market as a security bond to back currency, uh, they could be worth a hundred million dollars debt. Right? I'm worth a couple of billion at least. Right? I, f I found a forum where so people who were doing that, um, tracing their own account, mm. and this one person said, I've got 537 million in their account. That's right. Uh, That's just an average guy. Mm. So what did they put on me? That was going to knock me off real quick, right? But they put billions on me. So I'm a very, very wealthy man if I can only get my hands on the money, which you can't. Uh, there is steps you can take to get it, but uh, you never get that far. It's about controlling. And, 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 now, yeah. that is something that um, you could look at um, what Al Capone was doing in America. Uh, he would insure someone, and this is what you can do. You just buy an insurance policy for $100,000, $200,000, million, whatever you want, on Joe Blow, who might be a drunk lying outside a alley in Los Angeles. So then his thugs would go around and just, uh, this drunk, would give him lots of money. So he'd go and get really pissed, right? And, we can, and then soon after that he would die. Or they'd help him along a little bit by choking him to death. And who cares about a person dead choked on a bottle of whiskey and uh, his vomit in the back alley out of some, mm. some area in uh, Haight Ashbury, Los Angeles. All right, that's what Al Capone did. He took nothing mm. on the Jews. Yeah. Nothing. He probably got the idea from the Jews. Right. So this is what he was doing. He came up with Murder Incorporated, which means you can kill someone as long as you haven't got a motive. You hire someone else to do it. So the thug would go in and kill somebody, has no motive whatsoever, would just disappear into the crowd, and uh, 
and say, why is that person suddenly dead? Well, he's been insured. Right? So there's no motive there. No one knew about the insurance scheme. Right? So the Jews have gone one better than that. They've insured the whole world through the birth certificate. So when you see your um, musicians in particular, uh, I made a joke. Well, it wasn't really a joke. I was saying serious. I said to a customs guy or an immigration guy going into America, um, I was going to fly out to somewhere, and I said, is there any movie stars or, or singers on this plane? And the guy said, look at me, right? And uh, he, he said, why? I said, well, you know how they all die in plane accidents. His Frank Sinatra's mother got killed in, a, in his own plane, mm. right, as a warning because she was involved with the mafia, right? Then you've got um, John Denver. Mm. You've got the Big Bopper. You've got um, uh, Richie Valley. Mm. We've got... Um, uh, what's another thing that went down? Um, oh, there's a whole bunch of them. The um, the big band. Oh, Glenville. Yes. During the war. Mm. Um, so he went down in a plane, going across again, and not all set up, flying in a fog across the English Channel, never never survived. Um, so the temple of the plane, um, John Denver, he um, bought a plane in Seattle. And then nosedived in the first flight into the, uh, wonder, it's called the Wonderful Gefrachten Straits. Andrew is helping us out here. He's got uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Buddy Holly, Buddy Holly. Skynard. So what they do is, it, um, you look at, I mean, there's several ways of killing you, but that's just one, the, the aircraft. And then there's, there's car accidents. So you've got um, Diana Dawes, she was decapitated in a car. Mm. Had a head cut off in a car. Um, and it goes on and on. Well, then you've got Marilyn Monroe. Mm. Right? Then you go through the singers uh, that didn't necessarily die in planes. You've got uh, Roy Orbison. Mm. He's around 51. Heart attack. Well, heart attacks include the orange drink, little juice. They, what they gave him in Egypt, right? Knock it out. Um, then you've got um, uh, Robert Shaw, Robert uh, Taylor, Robert Stack. I think. I could be wrong on those two last ones. Um, famous actors who went down, mm. right? All around 51, Errol Flynn, mm. um, and on and on it goes. And, and you've got Andrew's reminding us of the more modern ones in um, Whitney Houston. Michael Whitney Jackson, Houston, that was so. a sacrificial killing, mm. right? Uh, Michael Jackson, I think he done himself in, in the sense that he's just, I mean, he's a smart but stupid man, right? Uh, after his a, a supposed death, uh, one of his friends that he had befriended that was a burn victim. Oh, Dave Davis. Dave, 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 Dave Davidson. Dave Davidson or something like that. He then goes on Larry King's oh, show and he's got so Michael funny. Jackson's voice. This Michael Jackson done up as a man has been totally uh, burned burn, yeah. and the wrong colour eyes. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so there's a lot of speculation that he's alive and with but at least <laughs> it seems he, to be he, true. I think he might have squeaked through. Mm. So um, it's, it's endless. So uh, Al Capone had nothing on the Jews, and uh, this is worldwide, all governments involved, and say, well, how can that be? Well, it's called Britain. Right? Mm. They are trying to be Israel, right? And Israel goes back, of course, to their own invented Judaism. And But if you look at the scriptures, we are talking about it yesterday, and I had some of the numbers that were um, coming from the moon position, which I want to get back to in a moment. Uh, what you've got, uh, Israel, is my number. Uh, in Hebrew, concordance number, that same number in Greek is Nazareth or Nazarene. And it means he will rule as God. So when the word Israel, it refers to Jacob, right? So Jacob then is the king, if you like. Whoever inherits the kingdom from king to king to king to king comes down to the final king, which is, of course, myself, is Israel. So it's not a bunch of Jews calling themselves Israel. It's not an area of the world calling itself Israel at all. It is Christ. Hmm. That's right. So he will rule as God. Now, the numbers that come out of the measuring of the moon um, is so fantastic. And uh, as we explained yesterday, for anyone who was listening for the first time, is that 
The 28th of September, blood moon, um, when you measure that to uh, my rebirth home um, in Sydney, it is 2424 uh, miles from the position of the sun. Now the sun has a nuclear fusion rate of 657 million tonnes of hydrogen into helium per second, 4.2 million tonnes become light and heat. So when we get through all this, we come to the point where it is talking about uh, there will be no need of the moon or the sun. It doesn't mean that it's, the word is need. Mm. Right? It doesn't mean it's not there, that in the paradise to come where uh, the uh, Emmanuel figure, God with us, uh, will rule as uh, God, will rule uh, with a rod of iron, is God, etc., is the Lamb and God the light thereof. This is the Christ figure, which is the trinity of the God and the Lamb of God, Jesus, uh, being the same entity, but at different stages of thought. One is the creation, one is the period of time of 33 years of Jesus, and then you've got the Christ, which is now. And we're coming up to the 28th of September, and we're going to be 71 point seven one seven six two nine six two nine is redeemer and uh that number seven one seven of course is what andrew has a question about that date 28th oh. september he's asking are you able to give any information on how we are to go about administering the kingdom for you once armageddon takes place now through September 28th, 2015. Well, that's a starting point. That's, that's the, um, uh, the top of the mountain has been reached, if you like. This is your Mount of Olives uh, parable. Now, remember, you're not going to climb up a mountain where there's all the logs and there's going to be Jesus descending on a white horse. That's a parable. Right? <laughs> the Mount of Olives means uh, the people mm. of the world who believe, primarily younger people. And... From that point onwards, then it starts to spread out. Now, when finally the government comes into fruition, uh, it'll be very, very shortly after that. And we also have coming in with Andrew's question and looked at Nehemiah lately. Well, There's let's nothing look at all this. The moment, like, nothing at the moment. No, but, uh, I've got a whole computer full of stuff that's mm. been down at Nehemiah. Goodness me. So there's all sorts of strange things happening down there. Or have been happening over time. Now, uh, so it's going to be a, um, a sudden change in attitude towards what we're doing. For example, um, this uh, church we went to, which is all spectacularly accurate in distances and heights and so forth, above sea level, etc., that relates back to uh, the Michael and goes right back to my blood number. Um, the pastor there, of course, no problem believing, but he has a bishop over him. Mm. He lives now, down the bottom of the hill in Amritsa. That's right. So he's been given all the information before we got there. Yes, I, yeah, I, did. I sent the information to them. There was no response. However, you know. Now, um, what the pastor will not realise is that the power of the Anglican Church comes from a Jew, mm. which is the uh, man that's under the Queen, in England. Hmm. Justin Westminster. Welby. Justin Welby. Here he is, an oil executive who comes... I, I just thought yesterday I was saying Justin Welby, MD. Yeah. Justin Welby, DM, <laughs> demon. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. that's, that's what the world is. It's all demonised. So no matter where you got, if you start going from the pastor level up, as we did now, uh, and I have sent them how that the church itself can be the health 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 healing centre in uh, the area where uh, it will invite people to come in who is of different religions and irregardless of the religion they're all uh, creation of God they're all children of God so you've got to demonise people that are studying the, the various religions in India which keeps you uh, subject to the devil they will come in because they're sick mm. so this is what I gave the, the Pope uh, that each of the churches throughout the world will be healing centres. So 
you've got the church, the Anglican church across the road from the Catholic church and the Jehovah's Witness down the corner. Well, anyone who's sick, they might want to say, well, we hate the Catholics because they're stupid, right? Because all churches belong to God. Like, hello. It doesn't matter what your shingle is out the front, mm. right? You might be bullshitting something that is correct about the Catholic Church and being child molested, which they are, right? And we're getting, going to get rid of that. So if you purify the Catholic Church, does it not sound the reason that there would be some church ministers might look at and say, well, they have cleaned it all up. Perhaps we should make friends with them. Mm. Not to destroy the, the church of Anglicans, right? But become like and do well the good things are Catholics, they've got a health program. Uh, well, we can do that. But if they don't do that, all of their people that are sick and dying of cancer and so forth, that are sitting there praying to Jesus to help them, ain't working. Mm. So, well, hey, hey, maybe let's get up and go across the street to Catholic and see if we're working over there because I know Joe, I can play bowls with, lawn bowls, mm. and he's had cancer and he's cured. Maybe we should go across there. And this is what's going to happen. You'll start inviting people in just by the lure of health and by the lure, and I said, printing our own money out of the Vatican. I mean, I'll say what the money is worth, not some jury in bloody that gives Australia or, or some part of the United States a credit rating. Right? Can you imagine Australia on a credit rating? Mm. It's the richest country in the world. Mm. Yet they have our dollar, compared to the American dollar now, is about 70 cents American for one Australian dollar. Okay, Andrew's asking another question. Yeah. Will you renew the Essene way for the world? Would certainly be a very, very strong uh, plot, if you like, against demonised world to have a uh, Essene way as being the basis of uh, what a human being should be. Yes, is the answer. It's got to be modified a little bit. Hmm. But, yeah. The uh, uh, from what I've read in this lifetime about it, it has be it's become another fanatical. Well, that's right. Way eh? and, and and they too have rejected, or at least the, all the information that's been sent. Well, so so everything has to. You come along. The uh, the everything has to be tweaked. All religions have to be tweaked. Well, religion should be and, done later. It's, it's, it's about living uh, well so that the temple, which is your body, is clean and is able to um, keep you healthy, the soul within, the housing for the well, soul. Well, you know, what I was talking about before, the uh, sun position um, on the 28th at, uh, I think it's 2.47 UTC time, you measure that position to my rebirth uh, home. And uh, it's 2424 four miles. Now, if you go to India and you measure across the 20 degree latitude, it's 888.8 eight, eight, eight eight miles. And then you go down to the southern tip uh, of India and it's 888 eight, eight nautical miles. Come back up to the uh, west coast and back again. You've got a distance around the, the uh, three angles of 2424.1 uh, four nautical miles. That's how accurate it is. Hmm. So you can get these dimensions by uh, two ways. Um, you can measure it with Google Earth, and you know that Google is Earth is going to be up by a certain percentage. So what I can do is measure a thousand miles or kilometres or nautical miles or ten thousand, whatever, and see what it is from point A to point B on Google Earth. Then I take the latitude and longitude of those two points and put it into my Magellan program, and then see what it should be. And it's always out. The longer the distance, the further out it is. But then you then have a ratio. So you can use Google Earth to measure from point A to point B. And then with that ratio, what is out by, put that into the equation and uh, reduce it or increase it depending on what it has to be. So in that I, can, bottom, I can do that. The bottom line, by measuring everything, that's where the truth is revealed. And this that's is all exactly Andrew, right. This is what Andrew has just typed, you know, T-R-U-T-H. Capitalised is the Essene way. Yes. Hmm. So the Essenes had the right idea, but as I say, it was um, for a uh, era hmm. which now we have a modern era. Yes. And uh, we've got to tweak it a bit. Yeah. But it's basically the only way to, to live.
The, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Healthy mind, healthy body. Yeah. Healthy soul. Now, I have been looking um, at the red moon last night. Uh, Joel's, I uh, can add uh, the photographs he's taken, short video. Uh, for some reason or other, my cameras wouldn't pick up the redness. We could see it. Uh, it was basically overcast at points in time. It was very frustrating. However, um, what it was, I was able to do was get the angle in relationship to um, perpendicular and uh, the moon appeared to be, according to my old programs that are not connected to the internet, the moon was in the right position. However, Jupiter and Saturn and uh, Venus in particular are not. Mm. So, what causes that? Well, the Earth's tilting over. We know that. This is what uh, is due to the Coriolis effect, number one, of the Milky Way galaxy. A lot of scientists have always thought that the Coriolis was caused by the rotation of the Earth being like a, a spinning disc in a, a, a child's playground mm. where they had those little wheels that you kids... Spinning top. Spinning thing, whatever you call it. And put a ball on the centre of that and then it runs out. Or turn, it'll go on a curve. Well, of course it will. Uh, however, that's not the Earth. Mm. Um, it is caused by the spinning disc of the Milky Way galaxy, which was proven by the fact that um, we were able to predict a very, very long period of time that the Mayan calendar was out and that the crossing of the Milky Way galaxy is going to occur on uh, the date it did, which is 11.11 11 a.m. and um, uh, December, 11, 11, December 2011. 20. That's why everyone was seeing 11.11 11 everywhere. So it's in the, in the psyche of the world, if you like, in the Western world at least. Now, um, since that is the case, uh, it's caused by the spinning of the uh, Milky Way galaxy itself. It's moving. So therefore, all movement is what causes atoms to exist. If you didn't have movement, you'd have a problem. So the Earth's solar system, uh, Milky Way, is like an uh, electron atom uh, and then a physical body all moving and uh, generating on the same orbital motion of things that are, in fact, uh, magnetic fields. You take what is an electron, we'll say, well, it's a negative, okay, never negative. And what's a negative thing? A little negative thing is orbiting around a proton positive. Okay, what? And what happens if uh, you put the two together? Well, it just evaporates, but nothing happens. Hmm. It's gone, see you later. So it's a negative charge and a positive charge, like a battery, so to, so to speak. How can a battery have a positive charge and a negative charge? All right. And yet when you put the two together, it flattens the battery. So you end up with a nothing. Yet that's what all matter is. The battery itself is made up of little negative charges and positive charges. So what is material realm? It is really a mirror of the heavenly realm. A materialistic illusion. A materialistic <laughs> illusion is what they say in India. Right? Which they're quite right. Our Hindi holy man. <laughs> he's, quite, he's quite right. And he did say one thing which surprised me about the uh, religions over there is, and his particular brand of it, being a Sanskrit scholar, uh, PhD, um, was that only God is male. Hmm. It surprised me. Mm. But I've been yapping on about it for a very long time, as mm. you know. So only God is male and all female souls. Mm. Well, hello. Mm. Well, hello. I've been telling you that for, for seven years and I've been saying that for 20 years before that. Mm. That's right. So it's very, very interesting. Now, I had something brilliant to say. Now I've forgotten what it was because I'm looking at you, you beautiful creature. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so Andrew, just another... Andrew left another little, he said, uh, when we clean all the BS off things in the world and in our minds, we should be left with the essence. You're yes. quite right. Now, um, as you know, if uh, you are an evil person and you die, you go to hell. Right? And the saints go to heaven. They go to heaven to be with God. And that's a pretty common idea throughout time. So now that God is on the earth, and the demons are also on the earth, 
God has come to the earth to cast the demons out, not the other way around. Hmm. God hasn't come to earth to be cast out by demons. So the inevitable, irregardless of the tremendous um, negative thought at this moment, hmm. ha, 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 how can hmm. one little hairy creature come down, say he's this and say he's that, prove it all mathematically, and of course, if you've got any half intelligence, you, you'd agree with it. Do you think that's going to stop it happening, whether mm. you agree or not? Mm. You think these demons, the Jews, and these these monsters that, that control the world and all the negatives around the world, and even this little uh, bishop that's in the church that we've just come back from and has already not answered your original mm. uh, information, and now I say to him again that you can in, cure all of India. Mm. You can beat the Catholics to the punch by mm. spreading the Anglican Church. Well, he's dominated by the same demon. Mm. Right? He wouldn't be the bishop if he wasn't a demon. Oh, yes. That's how it works. They pride themselves on their years of academic, well, theological studies they, and ministries, yeah, etc., well, etc. Well, they've dug themselves a hole, of course, <laughs> and then, then the truth comes along as a different hole. Mm. Right? It's a mountain. It's a <laughs> hole reversed. Get over this one. Get Oops. over that. I've just so wasted 30 hole, years. Mm. So, yes, so that's so what it is. Now, will the sun and the moon still remain in positions of what we see it in regards to September the 28th? Will it be the moon influenced because the wobble of the earth is now um, influencing the position of the moon somewhat and it follows the magnetic field of the earth? But is the sun also going to be in the same position? Or will the earth upright itself to the point where it will be perfect for the 28th? Because if the axis is moving, the sun's in a different spot, and at the equator, around 1,030 miles per hour, if you was to measure position of the sun on the 28th at 2.47 UTC time, and the earth is tilted over, it ain't going to be in the same spot. So, will there be any need to read the sun and the moon from that point onwards? Hmm. Will it right itself just for that moment? Because at the moment, it should be out. Right? That's the whole point. So we're going on uh, established earth in a very stable situation so that... Uh, Astronomy programs that can tell us exactly where, if the Earth hadn't tilted over, that the Sun and the Moon should be, or all of the stars, for that matter. All of them. Gives you everything. Absolute precision. But if the axis of the Earth is tilted over and the Moon is now wobbling on a different orbit, hmm. then how can these things be applied to, and is it lied about? Well, of course it's lighter down. That's why if you're an astronomer, uh, your uh, chances of survival in the last few years has been quite slim if you told the truth. Mm. Right? Was it that Harrington that went down to New Zealand? Robert Harrington, yes. Um, yeah. he, he didn't last two years. He ended up dead. What he found out about, because in the Southern Hemisphere, you're looking at a different uh, area of the universe than you are in the Northern Hemisphere because you can't see it. Mm. So uh, the space hubble can, they can. For example, what what I find rather amusing, um, talking about if let's say uh, you and I some years ago decided we're going to go to the moon, and uh, we went there, and we put a flag of Australia in it, right? <laughs> and we come back, and they, they say no, it's all bullshit. You didn't go. So we'll take your space hubble and focus at this latitude and longitude, and there's a bloody Australian flag stuck up. Well, I don't approve it, right? Hmm. Yeah? Well, the Americans could do the same thing. They could take any of these uh, fantastic machines they've got in America that can take a photograph of the smallest area of the moon with this giant telescope and space Hubble in particular, right? And they could show you the remnant of the lunar lander because the main body of it stayed on the surface of the moon and then the 
module took off. According to the script. According to the script. Right? Now, Stanley Skrubeck. 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 And after relation? Steve Bark, I wrote the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, wouldn't that be simple? Hmm. Well, let's end the argument. Well, there's, listen. There How are, about Japan? They've got telescopes. There's all, kinds, there's all kinds of photographs that have been floating around of Mars and the Moon, and there's supposed to be um, man-made structures on both of them oh, and bases yeah. on the other side. And... and the, the ridiculous amount of um, information that has be, been flooding the net is just that ridiculous. And it's yeah. all distraction. All right, so now I go back to the locations of the moon and the sun where they're supposed to be on the 28th. Whether they will be in that location or it doesn't matter. The whole thing is you go into home planet, you can download it. I think it's John Walker uh, wrote the program many years ago. Very, very brilliant man. And uh, you can get the light version or you can get the uh, uh, 14 uh, meg version and um, as a zip file and it'll give you your satellites. All the satellites are known to man mm. and you can upload it back and forth, any information you've got and uh, new satellites that's going up all the time, download it, it'll tell you where it is and where it is going across the, the, the surface of the earth. Personally, I don't give a damn about that. But it will give you all of the information I've been giving you over the last little while on the location of the moon and the sun at various states. And you can do it every day of the year. You can go back in time a thousand years. So I'd, I'd go back in time two thousand years or more. Right. So uh, location of the moon, for example, I looked at at uh, 2888 BC on uh, March the 27th. Hello? Like, not many people do that. I do. I go back to the presumed creation date that has been bantied about. You look at where the moon was then. You go back pre-flood. Well, there's no moon pre-flood, but it'll tell you where it would have been had there been a moon. Mm. This kind of thing. So you go back 10,000 years, and we go back a million years. So it's all marvellous what we can do with modern computers. Now, that's where I've got them by the shorts. They can't get around it because you can all do the same thing. There it is. Now, I don't know whether you can buy <clears throat> Easy Cosmos. Probably you can. Probably get an eBay somewhere. Like Carl Sagan. Mm. Now, Carl Sagan was a complete atheist, right? He's a Jew as well. And uh, he's the one that, uh, when they sent these, it might have been Cassini or one of those out into space, um, they had a plaque with it where there's a woman standing there and a man standing there, all naked, of course, and uh, some hieroglyphics that if this is ever found out in space by some alien... Um, Return it? Yeah, bring it back. <laughs> bring it back at light speed, right? Um, and this is how dumb he was. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, this thing, just to go out to past Jupiter, ironically, when they do send these satellite out past Jupiter, it's just there at the right spot under under the south side to see the rocks hurled by God. Remember the numbers mm. I said that the, mm -hmm. that uh, all the numbers turned out to be mm. by getting UTC numbers and what time the actual impacts occurred in the 21. So it was turned out to be rocks hurled by God. Mm. No, sorry, it was mountains hurled by God. Uh -huh. So. The technology had developed through NASA and the, and the might of the United States who could do these things and uh, putting all the war, war technology together and uh, end up building this thing that they could throw out into space to have a camera on board. It just happened in the right spot at the right time. This is going past, right, 12 years took to get there. 12 years, yes. And then in 1994, on the same date that they murdered Schumacher. Yeah. Uh, some years later in Australia. I'd written to him, by the way, and... Uh, so he ran into a truck in a desert. Yes, now, <laughs> you know, look at Australia, uh, go to Google Earth and zoom in to Alice Springs, something like that, and then look at the road in any direction, there's nothing there, nothing, zero. We've travelled that road, there is nothing. We've travelled it, and um, a, truck will be, you know, a truck will be coming towards you and you'll see it, the Trust dust. Miles away. Ten miles or more away, exactly. over the horizon. Yep. 
It's like see. a dust cloud and then you realise. And just as it got to Carol and Eugene Shoemaker, from a helicopter above, they detonated mm. and blew his front tyre the same as the same trick they used in the, is it the Alamein Tunnel? Where they Channel killed France, Diana. In France, Diana. Mm. Exactly the same thing, mm. right? They blew the tyre and the car swerved into an oncoming train truck, which had no way of stopping these things. No, they're huge. Uh, you look at a big train truck in uh, Australia, it might have four large trailers it's pulling with a thousand horsepower motor mm. engine at the front. There's no way you can stop it because they're going dead straight, these things, right? So they're doing about 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, in the, whatever the case may be, road uh, conditions for me. And it's dead straight. And all of a sudden, Eugene and Carol go past and at the exact moment, blew a tyre and straight into the front of it and killed him because he was driving. With that, time. we've been winging it for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> We'll go out with Andrew's final comments. He says, uh, humanity's lack of discernment, in brackets, the ability to see things as they really are and not how the ego wants them to be. True, very true. And ergo, the ego is the cause of the suffering on Absolutely. this planet. Absolutely. Francis's ego the ego oh, of all the religious. What a monster he is. Uh, his ego must be the one. And uh, even the ego of all of the nuns. Yeah. We've read this morning. Yeah. The rejection. Ergo, the ego. With that, here comes the Go Lightly Martial Hour Choir. Uh, uh. And we'll be back winging it tomorrow. Unless but, we think of something else to say. Unless we. <laughs> 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 Later, Gators. Andrew, goodbye. Goodbye, Andrew. The Go Lightly Martial Art on FreedomTalkRadio.net Andrew says, it has been fun, let's do it again. Yes, and anybody else out there <laughs> who wants to join in now that we're doing this live, um, it is fun. All right, here we go, pressing the red button and we'll be back tomorrow.